I'm Amber Davis and this is your five minute call. This is the space where musical theatre takes centre stage. From unforgettable backstage stories with incredible special guests to insights from my life and my theatre journey. We're leaving it all on the mic every single week so let's jump in. I have been so excited for you guys to listen to this conversation I had with Karis Anderson. She is electric and, of course, playing Tina Turner right now in Tina Turner the Musical. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I have 101 questions for this absolute (laughs) powerhouse who is sitting next to me right now. It's Karis Anderson. Hello. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited. Honoured to be here. Oh, stop it. I'm a small fish, babe, compared to some of the people you got sitting Are you right kidding here. me? No, I'm not. But I'm, you know. Are best. you kidding me? <laughs> right, we have a little ritual on this show mm-hmm. where I ask the guest to tell me what their pre-show ritual is. Ooh. So mine is meditating. I love that. But I meditate like at beginners. Let me not pretend like I'm meditating for half an hour. <laughs> I put on, you know, the calf comes. I'm usually quite chaotic. I like like a really tidy space, but like okay. my mind is chaos all the time. So I'll either put some Tina on or put some friends on. Okay. One of the other <laughs> extremes. <laughs> yeah. Get ready. I don't really like loads of people in my room no. before the show. Each to their own. Yeah. But I like Zen focus. And then the five comes about. As we know. As we know. <laughs> and yeah, I get ready and then I get on stage and I sit. The show starts with like some stairs on stage. And I sit on the stairs. Everyone's like running up and down the stage. And you're just like... And I'm literally sitting there. Nam yo renge kyo. I like that. Yeah. So you don't run any lines or anything? No. I just listen to Tina sometimes okay. just to get some, you know... Clicking. Some Clicking into it. spirit into me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I'm more of a... Okay, what's this line? What's this line? Really? Ha- there's a few lines when I'm doing Viv that yeah. I have to do before going on. Still? Still to oh this day. There's a, she has like word vomit at some point. Right. So I have to get that yeah, yeah, yeah. out. Okay, can we start with Stushy? Yes. I mean, <laughs> Black Heart. I don't know if anyone listening here, but that was nostalgia for yeah. me. That was like secondary school. Heartbreak. My first heartbreak ever <laughs> got me through it. And now you're sitting right next to me. Like, how did that come about? It genuinely feels like a whole lifetime ago yeah, now. I can imagine. I got in the band when I was 20, 21. Young. Like nearly 15 years ago. It's so strange. Yeah, I had a call from a lady who I used to go to the studio with. Okay. Random call. I was like outside a club on New Year's Eve. Like, hi, babe. You still singing? I'm like, yeah. Do you want to be in a band? Go on, then. Like, it was literally like that. It's, it's a casual. Mix, it's a mixture between Bruno Mars and the Spice Girls. I was like, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. And that was it. And then we shopped at all the labels. Shopped at <laughs> where we are here. <laughs> our soul. Our soul. <laughs> yes. We were just so lucky. We, we wrote the album, recorded the album, shopped it to labels had like all these big dogs like wanting to sign us. And he was like, is this actually happening? What? We're like three girls from South London who like bunk trains to get to the studio. And now I'm literally like, Simon Cowell's like, name your price. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? I know. It was, was, it, was uh, it like, did you have a feeling something like that was going to happen to you? Um, yeah. You did? Yeah. I love um, that. I love that. Because <laughs> you're into manifestation, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Big time. Yeah. You know, like I... I can't wait to like have kids and teach them it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's so important. And it's so important that we understand how powerful our minds are mm. and how like my slogan is words are spells, words are spells. Yeah. I'm so careful about what I think and say now because I don't want to attract. You attract it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've so always you, said you, that I wanted you, to be in a girl band. You knew. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to be in a girl band. I've, I think I've had like two nine to fives, lasted about three minutes. <laughs> I'm so bad. It's, it's not for the week, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Get me on the stage and give me a microphone. Even I could barely use this. But um, I'm just, I'm a, I'm an artsy creative babe, you know. Yeah. I'm more than in awe of everybody that can do the nine to five. Yeah. Because it is actual real hard work. It is, it is. But it's, I can't do it. I can't no. focus if I'm not creating. So I just always knew I would do something in terms of being in a band, being in a girl band. And I also always knew that I'd be in musicals, but I didn't even know... How, How you were going to get there. It, yeah. So I just trusted the journey, you know. And so I've swayed way off Black Heart. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So that was like our biggest hit. Yeah. And co-written by Shazne Lewis from All Saints. Oh, really? So random. Also another little fact. Yeah. That's, that is crazy. Yeah. And yeah, it just blew up. 
it went viral on TikTok like the other day. Yeah, and I was well, like, what's going oh on? Oh my gosh, we'll have to do the TikTok. <laughs> yeah. But I just feel like everybody knows the song. Oh, yeah, I think more people know this song than they know us. <laughs> like, we're just some girls that sang Black Heart. <laughs> like, who's does she? Black Heart. Oh, If yeah. you're like, do you remember Black yeah, Heart? Yeah, oh, yeah. of course. I'm and just like, grateful, you know. It's and that time. world at the age of 21, mm. like mentally, physically, yeah. like what was that like? I'd love to just experience it for one day. Do you know mm. what I mean? Do you know what? I think I didn't experience it as heavy as I would if I was maybe a solo artist. Okay. Because we was literally three girls. Girls? Girl. Three girls. <laughs> Tina's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> three girls who used to sit literally together. Like, it was just us three in a bubble. Yeah. So we never really, like, broke from that bubble. If we went out, we'd just be, like, little, like, hermits. In together, together, together. Yeah. So we didn't... Like that, a lot of people have these like bad experiences because they've had like one on one, you know, experiences with people. We were just su in such a bubble. I'm still in a bubble now. Like, I'm, yeah. my friends call me like a fairy. Like, yeah. I stay in my little bubble. And I'm not like I'm affected happy. by things. I'm happy, yeah. you know? So, we, and we didn't like have, sisterhood. Yeah. For All sure, got on. For sure. Like, we was completely different. Per it was like a real family, completely different girls, all together. We loved each other for who we were. And we just kind of stuck together. So, I didn't have that this massive experience outside in the world of musicals music, music even yeah I, I experienced it but I was just felt like I was having the best time with my besties that's how I, that was my experience you I know? love that yeah. and then why did you guys come to an end because I didn't want to read into anything I thought I want to hear it from the horse's mouth I don't even think people even know like the real true story so this is an oh exclusive. my gosh um, I was then <clears> drama Mm -mm. Let me explain. Okay. So there wasn't really drama, never between us and no. never between us and the record label. We were signed to Warner Music in the end. That's who we went with. But we was, we signed a 360 deal, okay. which is when you sign to your management. So you sign like your whole life away to your manager. Okay. And then they sign you to the record label. So essentially they are in control, right? Mm. Very dangerous deal. Um, and now people have their own record labels and they, you know, doing things direct. And it's beautiful to see. But back then as a pop artist, just signing 360s. Okay. So we was just always under the shelter. Whereas a lot of people go into offices on their own and making big decisions. We never had that. No. We was like, okay, what are we doing today? Like, what are we singing naive. today? What are we wearing? Yeah. So naive. So anyway, our, our manager, who she's so beautifully creative. She wrote most of the music. Amazing. But she was just too close to it. Do you know what I mean? It was too... She was too precious with it. And I think mm. she was scared of any little thing going out of her perspective of what should happen for us. And we just clashed on a few things. We went to, just after Black Heart, after the album came out, we went to LA. We was about to sign to Sony BMG. Like, literally about to sign the biggest deal of our life. And we walked into the room to do a showcase to the, for them. When we walked in to get changed, we had on, like, basketball jerseys and, you know, so casual, Air Force, just yeah. our casual outfits on. And we got changed into these... Outfits that we really didn't want to wear. They were so random. Had like spikes on, like. Okay, there, there was a narrative there. Yeah. yeah. So we walked in, and Sony, all the, they was in front of us, and they was like, "Why did you get changed? You look so much better before." And we was like, "We we were told to get changed." Yeah. Like, and we got bollocked for saying that we was told to get changed. Okay. And our manager left us in LA. Oh Cancelled no. the deal. We had a meeting with Doctor Luke the next day. She cancelled that. She cancelled everything. And she literally ignored us and she sent a lawyer saying, I will no longer be managing you. You've embarrassed me. <sighs> so literally, it, we lost our deal. We lost everything. And we was like under a rock. Social media, she took everything. So it was literally like just got stripped from It just you. got, yeah, over no real reason. It was just, you know, messed up the biggest thing for all of our lives at the time. And hers. Just because, yeah, because of like ego and, you know, but it, it, it happens. Forgiveness was it meant has happened. To happen? It was meant for me personally. It was so meant to happen, you know. It was scary at the time because I was like, what the hell are we going to do? And we tried again. It didn't really work. And I was like, wow. But I just, I never like backed down and said, oh, I'm just going to go to like a plan B or another job. I was just like, keep driving, keep driving. Something yeah. will happen, you know. This has happened. Yeah. Where's it going to take me? Yeah. Rejection's redirection, isn't it? Ooh. But I just feel like you've worked so hard. You've just made it so big in, in the UK. Mm. And then it's like... How do you navigate that in your mind? I think I didn't even, again, because we didn't get swept away with that we're so big thing. Mm. I was literally, we're very normal. Like there's yeah. nothing ever really changed about who no. we were. So I didn't really feel that drop. Do you, do you know okay, what I mean? yeah. Because we didn't even think we was that big. We were just like, we're having a lovely time. Woohoo! Like your feet like, were we always on the ground. Woohoo! We got, we did this, we did that, you know. But my feet were on the ground, and I think that allowed me to just stay grounded and just keep pushing. We had a new manager at the time, Vivian, lovely, lovely lady. She introduced me to my agent. Okay. And she just said, "Babes, 
you got the voice, you can do this. Like, have you ever thought about musicals? And I'm like, hmm, yeah, I want to do it, but I don't know how. Literally walked into my agent and was like, just believe in me. I don't have any formal training, but believe in me. But you did go to Brits. I went to Brits, yeah, but I, you know, I didn't do dance college. I didn't do a lengthy acting course or anything like that. I, I went to Brits for dance for two years and then music for two years. Okay, so did you did technically I have something, train. yeah, yeah. But I sit amongst like everyone else and I'm like, <laughs> my leg is like here and there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, like I'm, I'm going to give you a single pirouette. <laughs> yes, it's a single, babe. Yeah. You know, but it, yeah, I had, I guess, the foundational trainings. Yeah. But I still have had a bit of an imposter syndrome when I came into it. How weird is that? That's come up twice for, for us today. Oh, it's real. One of the listeners said, can you ask your guests, mm. do they get imposter syndrome? Yeah. It's only now... Even last year I had it, but it's like, I'm what in like seven years, I'm still a newbie really in the musical theatre industry. Mm. And it's only now that I really feel like I belong and I deserve to be here. Wow. And it's such a strange feeling. It's so weird. It's only now, for sure. That is, that is amazing to me. Yeah. Because you're, just, you know, your your career writes for itself. Like you've had such you. a colourful career. Yeah. Not many, a lovely word. Thank not you. many yeah. many people can like say your stories. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know? Can I can I just ask a question? I might sound stupid. Please. Is is the Brits Award mm -hmm. in connection to Brit School? Yes. It, it is. is, it is it, yeah, there's some kind of connection. We used to go there every year as, as Brit School. So I yes, it's, it. not, it's it's maybe under the same corporation, but I don't don't quote me, but it's okay. that, it is something to do with it. Yeah. I did think, and I thought, who's the best person to ask? Yeah. Someone who's been nominated for a Brit <laughs> and been to Brit. <laughs> it is. Ask I Harris. don't have an, as much information as I should, but <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a nice collaboration because it gives the young people... You go there and you're like looking round and it's amazing, you know. It's I've a never, beautiful experience. Yeah, I've I've never been to Brit School. I've been to the Brits. So yeah, I vaguely remember it because obviously my <laughs> tradition is I just got drunk at everything. <laughs> <laughs> One sip of champagne and I'm gone. <laughs> it's a fun night. Yeah, it is. It's a fun night. Yeah. Now it's time for a quick interval. Go and powder your noses, and we'll see you in two. First, I want to ask: When did you discover your voice? Um, when I was young, like maybe 13, 14, I just started doing like competitions. I just thought, oh, I can sing. Like I should just start doing something, local competitions. Okay. I had a really lovely um, vocal coach in Brit School. I had like Adele and Jessie was in the year above okay. me. It was a really good time. I mean, quality comes from that school anyway. Yeah. But I was just surrounded by talent. And I think that forced me to just keep doing better and better and the voice is a muscle. Like you it can is. get better at it every yeah. single day. I don't think I was that strong a singer ages ago, but now I feel like you know I'm. I'm You've worked there. on it. I've worked on it. Yeah. You've done enough work yeah, on it. Was it. Young, young teens, I think. Yeah, young teens. And like, was there anyone that you used to listen to and be like? It's so weird because everyone always asks me this, and I really don't have. I don't know who to say. Really. I don't have like. Okay, I love Beyonce. Because, but I love her for her like perfectionism. Yeah. And like, I love that she's her own competition and yeah. she, do you know what I mean? I, I really believe that I stayed in this little bubble in my own lane. I love loads of different singers, but I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't know who I could say influenced me. To sing. Yeah. 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 Strange. Because, because I've got a vivid memory. Of of how when I realised like oh my god I'm gonna be really? a pop star me. I mean I didn't end up being a pop star but, <laughs> um, star <laughs> <laughs> this is vivid yeah. all right I was like nine years old mm. or ten years old and Katie Malua mm. had brought out this single called Closest Thing to Crazy mm -hmm. and I s asked my mum mum please can you buy me the CD. Mm. And I used to listen to it on repeat, and and that was what made me think, oh my god, I've actually got quite a good voice. Oh my god, oh, that's a lovely memory. Yeah, that's that's nice. my memory. Mine's a boring. No, I've, I've got no a idea. Cool memory. <laughs> and good for you, babes. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Katie Miller. Where has she gone? Where has she gone? I'm gonna I'm gonna Insta Same stalk place as her. Tushy, by the side. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Hello. Love you all. <laughs> Transition from the music industry mm -hmm. to musical theatre industry, what are the differences like? Did you take anything from one into the other? Did you have to rebuild habits, things like that? <sighs> Discipline. Mm. You have to be disciplined in both. They're very different, like worlds apart. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because mu doing musicals is kind of like a creative nine to five. Let's not get it twisted. Yeah. I think people think that, you know, you're doing like, yeah, you're, you're on the stage and you're essentially you know, the star of the show possibly and, you know, 
you're doing this thing that influences thousands of people every day, but it is still the same thing every day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's that's just, It becomes different. a job very quickly. It is, yeah. It's yeah. a job. If you don't, I, I really try to keep it fresh every show and obviously do different things for myself without throwing the whole show. Yeah. But the difference is, I think you're you're still able to show up and be creative, but I think they're just completely worlds apart. They're so different. You're mm. acting. I've got, you know, I'm in a box, essentially. Mm. As much as I go wild in that box. Yeah. <laughs> you stay between the lines. You stay. You have to. Yeah. Um, but I love the fact, my favourite thing is the fact that you can have all of those releases as an artist and get on stage and do all the things, but then you can go and live a normal life yeah. in the day. Because when I was in the band... I was like having people ha like hanging out on my road and stuff. And like, I would go to like a house party. I'm obsessed with like, that. <laughs> I love that. You really don't. Not when you're like going to the shop with no makeup Not and when like, like looking trash. Oh, 21, 22. It's you like know what scary. I mean? I was in like a house rave at like 6 a.m. and I turned around and there was a super fan there. And I was like, hey, please, I'm so drunk. <laughs> please just don't be here please. right now. No Do you cameras. know what I mean? It's just, yeah. you want to, I really love having that separation of, just being normal and having that normal gal life. Yeah. I'm like renovating a house, super blessed. Love my partner. We have got a lovely little life going on. And then I go on stage and I feel like, you know, everything that I've worked for creatively is is manifesting and I have the best, yeah. the most gratitude and I just love what I do so much. But then I'm like, okay, I'm chilling now. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. a lovely balance. They're worlds apart, the industries, but you know get to be creative in both i just feel like like for people like us mm. there's no feeling like the energy of a live audience mm. oh, you money that's money can't buy that you feeling. Can't buy it. you can't you get on that stage every day and it's like you do want to win them over you know what i mean of course yeah that's but you don't do it for the claps and the cheers but no. when when you do naturally win them over best feeling oh my gosh and you just know that you've you've inspired that person or those people. Yeah. And that story that I feel like I'm a vessel for this, you know, I'm literally Tina is like running through me. Her story is shining out of me and I get to be that. I get to stand in her shoes and tell her this, this wonderful woman's story and inspire people. And they leave that theater like <gasps> beaming, do you know, just like yeah. I did when I've gone to see it before I was in it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's, and all the shows you just, you inspire people. And I feel like that is the purpose. I feel like I'm, kind of getting close to exactly why I'm meant to be here, you know, yeah. and I'm living, breathing my gift in purpose and inspiring people. I just feel like, what else are we really I love to that do? so much. <laughs> you say it in such like a calm and Thank this you. is what it's meant to be. Yeah. You should do ASMR. Yeah. I, I feel like ASMR. ASMR. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, your theatre credits include. <laughs> so, Aladdin. Mm. Yes. You did Aladdin. Oh, Panto. Panto. Gal. You did a panto. <laughs> yeah, but I'll take so credit. Was your first Jasmine, was your first musical theatre gig a panto? No, my first musical theatre gig was All or Nothing, which Oh, was, I've got that down yeah, here. It was at the arts, then we transferred to the Ambassador. Lovely show, really cool, like family vibe show. I was the love interest of the lead. Love. And Coincidentally, her name was P.P. Arnold and she was an original I kept in real life. Oh my God. And then I, it's so strange, the full circle of life. I met her, I spent time with her. She told me about her time with Tina and I was like obsessed with her at that time. That's so weird. And then now I came into Tina playing an I care. I was first cover. Tina yeah. At first. yeah. And now I'm Tina. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But it's just, yeah, the circle of life is real. Aladdin was my second gig. And that was a panto. That was a panto. I was Genie of the Ring, babes. Oh, <clears throat> wow. I fell asleep for one of my... Babe, I fell asleep. Wait, what? I fell asleep. What, doing a show? I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep and I didn't wake up. <gasps> like, I, I woke up and I thought I was dreaming. And I was like, why can I hear my music? Like, I feel like I should be somewhere. And I woke up and there was like, Karen! Were you in your dressing room? I was in my dressing room sleeping. Like, knocked out. I woke up. My shoes were off. <gasps> and, and you know, the shoes, babe. Like, the shoes. Yeah, they take like two minutes on the road <laughs> to get off. <laughs> two minutes each. Two, two minutes each. I li scrambled down the stairs. Oh my God. My one song. My one song. Oh <laughs> my God. Traumatised. Iconic. Traumatised. That is that is trauma, but iconic oh, at the same time. Yeah. Do you know, I feel like I actually have bad dreams sometimes where I do, like I don't know my words on stage. Do you ever oh, have don't, that? Don't, don't. But that's like one of my nightmares is like yeah. missing a cue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's traumatising. Well, you'll never do it again. No. And now I feel what sometimes I'm on standby in the building just because we've got, not got enough Tinas to go around. <laughs> and um, 
I'll just be sitting there and even though I'm not meant to be on stage, I'll like get the jitters when yeah. I hear my cue and I'm like, oh no, it's okay. Yeah, I'm not meant to be on stage. Yeah, it's oh, real trauma. That is terrifying yeah. to me. Literally terrifying. I was terrifying. a newbie. <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> hey, own it. <laughs> I always think like mistakes are, are there to be made. Otherwise, sure, you'll never sure. learn. And if you don't learn, learn then, you know. Come I mean, on. Get with it, babes. Yes. And then Motown. Yeah. Like, it was that insane. Like, it was so unreal to me because that was like my first, it was a supporting lead, but I still felt like, you know, I was leading lady. Supporting lead sometimes are better than lead leads because <laughs> you have less pressure. <laughs> you got a bit, yeah, I know. You get the chill, but you get the, the little, you can you know, steal the show. You get the spotlight still. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, the potential to steal the show and then just like yeah, chill for the yeah. rest of the time. Oh, dreamy. Yeah. Dreamy it was a tour. Simeon, you know Simeon. Oh, I know. Simeon Beckett, we love you. Oh, yeah, my God. I'm, Sim. I'm going to Edinburgh next week with Pretty Woman and Sims oh. there. We're oh, going to go on nights out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was my vegan bud on um, when I was vegan all those years ago. Oh. Oh, gosh. He, he yeah. Not anymore. I don't no. think he is anymore. Neither am I. I would <laughs> not class you as a vegan. Babe, I was like vegan queen. I had like a whole yeah. vegan business and everything. What? Yeah, in lockdown. I was like, I had a catering business, vegan food, because I couldn't get a show. <laughs> so okay, I so get books. hang I on. Get some Wait, money. Who, who burst that bubble? Um, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did do a big pin when I wanted to get back on stage. <laughs> I was like, I'm done with this. What am I doing? Karis, get on stage, babe. <laughs> it was lockdown. I couldn't get a job, obviously, because all the theatres were out. I'd just finished the tour, Motown okay. tour, in the January of the year. COVID came in, like, March. I was like, that was my tough. career's over. You know, so I just started cooking. Just started cooking. Like, I'm going to be a vegan it was like milk for the pandemic. Prep, so, you know, it was no contact wow. and everything. Wow. It worked for a couple of years. And that I'm is very amazing. Lucky. Entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Hustler, this, whatever. Yeah. This girl is going to make money no matter what. <laughs> yes, yes. She's bringing in the paper. For sure, for sure. Always I have to have that mentality. But yeah, Motown was beautiful. Met some beautiful people. Did you like touring? Be honest. No, hate you it. Did, really? Yeah. Because I'm touring and I love it. Do you? I think you either love it or hate it. I think if I was like. single, if I was single and like, yeah, maybe just single. Mm. If I was single at the time, I would have been like, woo. But I just, I just want to be home. I was driving home every weekend from like Leeds, Bradford, all the places like Manchester. I was driving home every weekend. And even after shows when I was like within two hours. Like so, yeah. So, so after a double, you drive. Out, yeah. I know I do do that. Yeah. So I was shattered. And then I had some vocal problems and it was scary. I think I just wasn't in a good place mentally. Yeah. So it was a fun at the right time in your life. You yes. know what I mean? I couldn't do it now. No, Cast yeah. Casting directors, please don't. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> That's so interesting because mm. I, the first tour I ever did, like you, wasn't in the best mental headspace. This one I love. I, th I think... Good people as well. Yeah, I think yeah. as well, I just did town for a year before. Mm. And I always thought I liked a routine, but the older I'm getting, I feel like I need fresh. I want fresh theatres. I want... New sounds, yeah. new audiences. Maybe it's just like helping me. I don't know. Everyone's different. Everyone, Everyone is different. different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Each to their own. You're now Tina Turner <clears throat> in Tina, the musical, right? Iconic. Crazy. I mean, I feel like you could just stop there and you'd be happy. Babes, yeah. what do I do from now? Like, really, I keep thinking, okay, this isn't going to last forever, you know? Oh, baby, we're fine. And, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'll be fine, but it's just like what? Or, or, or do you challenge yourself to do <clears throat> something like completely? Yes, different. I think this is what I need to do because you know I played Diana Ross and I played Tina Turner. There's so many roles out there that aren't you know based on true life stories yeah. or more acting roles or you know I just and I, I would love to do something different. Like, would you um, ever do a play? <clears throat> be honest. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? Oh, that was such a quick <laughs> answer. <laughs> I was like, be honest. No. That. I think you me. have to be a, a, a certain like caliber of person to like I do a them. play eighty shows a week. Yeah. I'll just start. Going, ah, I'll just <laughs> break out into song like I can't. Your monologue will be turned yeah. into like a <laughs> whole. It would, would get ballad. It would. <sighs> I just can't contain myself. I'm singing. I just have to sing. <laughs> so cheesy, but yeah. I, I, who knows? Who knows? Right? You never know. But I just I know my gift, and it's singing. Everything else, I'm so grateful to be able to dance and act but singing is my thing yeah and I need to be able to do a lot of it I need to just to release know. yeah and what about tv like 
would love to. Screen acting. Yeah, for sure. That yeah. is a whole new avenue. It's a whole it? new avenue. And my, I've been, Tina is my bubble right now, even the thought of doing anything else. Some people do, you know, things alongside the shows. That's not some, something you can do with Tina. She's no. She takes it out of you. Yeah. It's probably one of the most demanding roles in general. Oh, and oh yeah. In, in, when it in comes of, in terms of performance all rounder. I think she even like exceeds Alphaba. For sure. And I'm with Emma Hatton at the moment. Who's, <laughs> yeah. Oh my so God. Like girl. Yeah. She's great to be able to bounce off of. Yeah. She's my Rhonda, who's my manager in the show and bestie in the show. And, and we've definitely taken that relationship off stage. You know, Elf is a big thing and of just a big performance and a big show. But, but Tina Tina's just, energy. energy babe. From start to finish, there's no, like, you, you're no getting show. change on stage. Do you know what I mean? She gets about two minutes to herself. Really? So are you on stage yeah. for the... I, can I just say, this is so bad, I actually haven't seen Tina yet. Well, now you can come and see now, me. Now I can come and I can come and see Anytime. me in the dressing room. Yes, please, yes. So is it like <clears throat> non-stop, two and a half hours? Non-stop. The first, we have a little glimpse of the end. We kind of flash back okay. from the end of the show to the beginning, which we show her in Rio. I think it's 1988. About to do her performance. And then we go back to when she was 15, 16 in that bush and we take it way back and we show her whole life. But from I come back, after getting changed, I'll simply be the best to come back to Nutbush. It's on stage or in the wing doing a 30 second change. Oh my yeah. God. And do you do eight <coughs> shows a week? No, four. I know. Blessed. Don't, babes. Why, why, why do you think I'm like, you, what, what do I do from here? you sort that out? <laughs> why do you think I'm like, what do I go from, where do I go? I can't leave. You do four I can't ever leave. shows a week. There's two, yeah, two teams. Four shows a week. I know it's, it's actually a dream. I I feel I started, physically sick. I know. To I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, feel I do eight. I know, babe. I know. I did Ikea. I started as Ikea and I did eight. So and that well, was well. We need to talk intensity. about that. Yes, so yes, yes. Firstly, you were Ikea and the ensemble, mm -hmm. and then you moved up to cover. I started as cover also. Oh, so you covered. I came in as first cover, Tina and Ikea at the same time. Yeah. Okay. And I went on two weeks in. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, did mm -hmm. you? Yeah. So we're on, she's ready. On. No dress, no tech, yeah. It's the best way to do it, I think. I rip it off. Rip it off, rip it yeah. off, just do yeah. it. Yeah. Go with your instincts. Exactly. I was, I, in my head, I was Tina. Really? Yeah, because oh, <laughs> I, like I said, I was manifesting it. I had a picture of a previous Tina and like the creative team that I saw on Instagram and I just saved it like five years ago. Right. It wasn't Adrian Warren, it was somebody else, I can't remember. And I was like, I will be Tina, like I will be. I don't know what's, how it's gonna happen, but I will be. But so I'm even when it. I started as I care, I knew the team. They was like, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about doing ensemble? And I was like, fine, like this is, what's, this is what, where I'm meant to be. I don't think my voice is even strong enough to tackle Tina. Yet. Yet. I've just come off tour from being Diana. She wrecked me my voice because it was all up here you know mm. and yeah and I so just love that like mm. what a gorgeous story mm. like you came in as cover and now she's yours yeah. isn't that do you feel a little bit more like I earned that yeah for sure and I think that's where that imposter syndrome kind of went away because mm. I feel like whether I believe that I should be here or not at least I worked for it do you know what yeah. I mean and I feel like I'm meant to I'm exactly where I'm meant to be like I've had a very similar history I've had a history of abuse like Tina like everything, uh, you know, I was in the music industry while I was going through it. It's just, I'm living, I feel like it's like my therapy. I come yeah. off stage like, <gasps> but I feel like I've ha also had a really calming therapy session also. <laughs> Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It's like. It's a dream. It, I, I I'm healing. I'm that. healing while I'm, yeah. while I'm in every, every day, every single show, I find a different way and that strength that she has. I didn't have that. Do you know what I mean? I didn't have that strength. So to have that now and relive some of the relationship, you know, character characteristics unfortunately that I've had yeah to then have the outcome that Tina had I'm living through it just like she's living through me literally and it's just a beautiful thing and as well <clears> I just <throat> feel like talent can only take you so far mm. you're obviously a credit to work with otherwise they never would have actually hired you do you, do you know you like you. do you know what I hope so I think I'm quite a nice person <laughs> I think I'm okay actually how do the role <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah it's yeah I, I, I get on with everyone in the building it's a really beautiful I just, I just get on and do what I'm doing. But even like, you know, you, a lot of people cast and like production, you're like, I have, oh, a, great, so I have a great relationship with production. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I, I love don't, that. And I don't, you know, some people might be like, oh, I'm, I just, I just have a good relationship with them. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah, I, I can't battle people. I can't, not everyone's going to be for you, but 
but you can nice be, to be civil nice. and, and it's nice yeah. to be nice and of course. when you're a kind person and you're not h- holding on to all these like resentments and all these things in the show because you might not be in the role you don't want to be in or all these things just let it go and, and with <clears> the things <throat> that have happened in your life you could easily be like you know where was me for sure I've this, had, this I've is had, it this is it yeah. and you just you hold yourself with like grace and yeah yeah and as tina this is the same thing i always channel what tina would do and she she was never a victim this is the whole um, thing never that's even when she speaks for. about what she's been through she speaks about it lightheartedly and people might be like you haven't healed but no she's gone through all of that and she was able to let it go yeah it's not about you're not trying to brush it off or smile it off she genuinely stopped herself from having an attachment from it because what it doesn't serve you from cre- reliving and you know you just power have to of let the it mind. go the power of the mind the power of letting go the power of you know attachment which is the biggest trap you know yeah mm. i think the only person that can detach mm. is is yourself no one can do that Absolutely. you have to do it for yourself no thing no person no, no. Th- nothing can happen unless you do it for yourself and yeah yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm in exactly the place I'm meant to be. I've let go of things that don't serve me. Even relationships now, like most of them are pleasant just because if you're not for me, you're not even in my mind. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, it's a nice place. To I be. think that comes with experience. and, and It does. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, you know, a few years ago, like, or even five to 10 years ago, I thought I was so grown and so, you think you know it all and you never know it all. Even no. our parents don't know it all. Their parents don't know it all. Yeah. You, know? you think just because you're an adult, you're like, you're I've got my shit together. No, it's, it's a process and we're all going through life. And dealing with things as they come about, and hopefully healing from each yeah. thing that happens. I love, I <coughs> love this. <laughs> okay, so we put out a little box to our listeners. They want to ask you questions. Cool. They don't specifically know it's you, but yep. I've catered to what I think you could answer the best. I'll take it. The first one is because you've mentioned it when you went on tour with Motown. Vocal health tips. Now, this girl has lost her voice three times already this year. Oh. Like, how do you navigate keeping your voice healthy? So, first of all, all the extracurricular stuff, it really needs to be cut out. I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm not a big drinker. Like, if you smoke, just stay away from it. Mm-hmm. If you're singing, it's not worth it. Because mm-hmm. when you do do those things, you, I genuinely just feel the difference. So, it's just a one and two, one and one equals two kind of thing. Yeah. If you want that result, go out and have a bender. Yeah. If you don't, have voice rest for the night before. Yeah. Chili, garlic, all these things that are going to aggravate and inflame. Go on. The whole list. Chili, garlic, yeah, garlic, I know. I There's eat a like a clover of garlic you. every night. Same. Me too, but this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying I cut these things, things out, out, but they are, they will help you if you don't do them. And just voice rest, like the power of resting your voice, talking is using your voice. Mm. And they say don't whisper either, do they? It's like worse. Yeah. I know, I've heard that. And just singing from here and not here. Yeah, breathe. There's so many things, just control and singing with correct technique. Because when I started teething, I was like, ow, ow, oh, every little you? thing. And now, and it was like vocal problems all the time. And now I can sing it with ease. I found the growl without it being damaging to my voice. Wow, you know? I love that. I'm like, I'm going to go again after yeah. the show. No, no, no. So just, and yeah, rest what's, and diet. What's your thoughts about steaming? Yes. Steaming. You steamer? Yeah, yeah. Mm, not maintenance. I'm a, like, when I get it, Bad, I then steam. I okay. don't maintain really bad. No. Um, so you're not a steamer every day type No, now. I'm not, but it's great. I'm not yeah. I'm an advocate for it. I just don't do it enough. Straw. Yeah, straw. Yeah. You how how do I how do we explain? Um put a straw in breath, some water. Put a straw in some water, blow bubbles, imagine your st- straws in your mouth and just like control breathing. Yeah. yeah. Control breathing. Yeah. And then the other thing that I ordered, uh what's that called? Nibul- nebulizer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was really good. They're good, yeah, they are good. Steam, saline, steaming, saline. Saline, yeah. Like go straight into your vocal cords. And really a- good, yeah. any of these things they say, don't yeah. they? Mm-hmm. But honestly, for me, nothing is better than a couple of days voice rest. I know. I'm just not chatting. <laughs> not chatting Basically. shit like me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible. Same. <laughs> One thing mm-hmm. you've learnt about the industry that can only be learnt on the job. Don't fall asleep in between your scenes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yes, not joking, but you know. <laughs> but one of the main things, I don't. I guess it can only be learned on the job, just, I, I don't know if this is the same thing of what you're asking, but I would say talent can only take you so far. Yeah. Being kind will take you way further. Everywhere. Literally. Yeah. You know, both of those will take you further than talent can get you in the door, but how can you stay in the door? Yeah. How do you stay in the building, you know? And I do think as well, like, being a good leading lady is a thing. 
You you have to How take. How long have we got? Because yeah, I, I could chat all day about this. It's now. like yeah. the the energy in the theater does depend on you. It How does, you bring everybody does. together. Yeah. How I, you start. You the learn energy. that on the job. Absolutely, that is probably more important than everything. Yeah, if you are a leading lady, the responsibility isn't just going out and doing the show. No, it's morale. It's you know, uh, you br- you raise everybody else up to your yeah. level of performance. Mm-hmm. So I give like I just always give a hundred and twenty percent because I think. It was for whatever I have that day, you know? Yeah, it, exactly. Every day is not going to look the same. No, no, no. But if I don't give that, then nobody else is going to show up with yeah. that energy. And I think it's a big load that you carry. Mm-hmm. It's a blessing, the biggest blessing, but it's a very heavy load. And I think it's, as ensemble, sometimes you forget how much that person is giving you. And sometimes, you know, you, you might not get it back on stage, but it's an energy exchange, isn't it? It is an energy but exchange. We have to show up. Yeah, and that's we it. do. We have to show up. And then it's up to you. There's two questions here. Who is the best person you've worked with? Or what's the funniest thing that's happened to you on stage? Oh, I have to answer both quickly. Okay. Best person I've worked with. Oh, I don't know. I met Bruno Mars and he was just so sweet. Okay. Like, we just got a name drop. He was officially <laughs> just got a name drop. I know. Sorry. <laughs> no, but he was signed to our label at the same time and we got introduced. And then we had him in a video and he was just so sweet. Like okay, the sweetest that's, guy. That's, that's, that's There's epic. all this stuff going around about him. Like, but he's just so lovely. Wait, what's going around ra- about him? Like all this debt stuff and like all this like gambling. Mm. But everyone has their thing, you know. <laughs> it's what it is. But he's a really lovely guy. I love um, that. I love that. Love that. Love that. Bruno question? Mars. Bruno Mars. The most funniest thing. Funniest thing. Basically, I went on stage in the wrong shoes, but they were so <laughs> badly wrong. Like, oh no, it was in a, sh- a song called Higher in the show. Okay. I was I kept still and we have to there is a high high intensity dance number and we've got our you know three inch can't remember what shoes they are very comfortable dance shoes Mm -hmm. and I went on in a pair of shoes that is an only acting thing they're pointed (laughs) kitten heel kitten heel pointed and I only realized as as I was about to run on and I was running on and I was like (gasps) not the kitten heel my feet were like that literally my feet Not were the like, scrunch babe, toe. they were scrunched because I do all these kicks in the number and I, I don't know how they didn't come off. My dresser was like, you've got the wrong shoes on. <laughs> I was I not, I'm meant to be like a leading that. lady because I'm not a self, self-sufficient self gal. I'm like, dress me. All I'm I can baby. think now, Karis scrunching her toes, <laughs> doing some kicks from there. To the oh, my shoe did fly off to the lady in the front row one time oh, as no. Tina in the fight scene. And I was like, I had to apologise and give her a hug in the finale just in case she sued us. Do you know what I mean? I had to like keep That's her sweet. That's probably the best day of her life. Yeah, I know. She was like holding on to the shoe for the Babe, whole scene. Take the shoe. Take the shoe. <laughs> Take That's the show, they're killing my toes anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. thank you so much you. for coming on. You thank are just you, a ray of freaking sunshine. You, you my Libra delight. babe. Thank my you Libra so much. hun. <laughs> Give me a cuddle. Thank you.